Assalamualaikum and greetings to everyone. This is Bio 330, Chapter 6, The Terrestrial Biomes, Part 1. First thing first, the lesson outcomes. By the end of this chapter, students should be able to first explain the characteristics of each biome and also distinguish between the different biomes. Before we go further, this is an introduction about this chapter. What is actually biomes? Biomes is defined as the major communities of organisms that have a characteristic appearance and are fairly distributed over a wide land area defined largely by the regional variations in climate. In other words, each biome may have a distinct characteristic due to their different types of climate. This factor will be varied according to the latitude and the longitudes of the Earth. The classifications of the communities is divided into two types of biomes, which is the terrestrial and also the aquatic biomes. So this chapter will focus on the terrestrial biomes, while the aquatic biome will be further explained in chapter 7. The terrestrial biomes are defined by their vegetational structure which in turn is affected by the climate of a region. There are nine different types of terrestrial biomes which are the tundra, the taiga, the temperate rainforest, the temperate deciduous forest, temperate grassland, the chaparral, the desert, savanna, and also the tropical rainforest. But in this video, only these five biomes will be further explained, while the other four will be discussed in the next part. Alright, this is the distributions of nine global biomes across the world. As you can see there, each biome is similar in the vegetational structure and appearance wherever it occurs on the earth. The biomes and its climate. Different environmental factors play a role in determining which biomes are found in their primary productivity. There are two key factors that affect the distributions of biomes. The first one is precipitation or the amount of rainfall, in turn affected by the distance from the ocean. The second key factor is the temperature, which is affected by the elevation. However, different regions with the same annual precipitation and temperature sometimes may support a different types of biomes, which means they can also be influenced by other factors such as soil structure, mineral composition, seasonal weather, fire, or seasonal drought. Okay, in this slide, you can see the picture of the precipitation and temperature across the terrestrial biomes. Next is the major features or factors or the criteria that are going to be discussed for all types of biomes. The first one is the location. This location may explain the distributions of the biomes across the world. Next is precipitation. This may include the amount of rainfall, snow and fog of the biomes throughout the year. The temperature may differ between the seasons of each biome. The weather and climate also will be discussed whether the biomes either to have hot or dry or wet climate. Last but not least, the flora and the fauna. This will explain on the vegetation and also the animal life, for example, what types of organisms that can survive or adapt with the respective environment. Alright, let's begin with the first terrestrial biome, which is the tundra. Tundra refers to a barren, treeless biome with a very little precipitation. The locations of the tundra biomes covers the area about 20% of the Earth's land surface and the region south of the ice caps of the Arctic are extending to the North America, to Europe and also Siberia. Tundra also can be found at the tops of the very high mountains. 
The precipitation is only about 150 to 250 mm rainfall per year, including the melted snow. While the weather and the climate, Tundra have long, harsh, dark winters and also extremely short summers. Tundra is the coldest land biome which range between the temperature negative 40 degrees Celsius up to 18 degrees Celsius. This will cause the evaporation of the water to be slow and formation of the permafrost. So what is permafrost? Permafrost is a unique characteristic of the tundra. It is a perpetually frozen layer of soil uh, and also other organic materials. This soil stay frozen most of the time, usually nutrient poor and have a little organic matter in the uppermost layer. During short summer season, the permafrost doesn't melt, therefore there are lack of soil for a large number of plants to grow. This picture shows the permafrost in Abisko uh, in Sweden. Now the flora and the fauna in Tundra. There are relatively few species of organisms that can survive in an environment like the Tundra. This is because Tundra have permafrost, low precipitation and low temperature. Let's take a look on the plants and the vegetation. The vegetation of the tundra is mostly herbaceous, which is like mosses, grasses and forbs, along with the lichens and some dwarf perennial shrubs and trees. Permanently frozen layer of soil, which is the permafrost, limit the roots of uh, penetration, growing deep thus preventing the establishment. Tundra plants seldomly grow taller than 30 cm in open area. Next is the fauna. Tundra have low diversity of animal species. The small insects includes the butterflies, beetles, mosquitoes are abundant during the short summers. These insects have a very short wing or no wings at all and adaptation to the constant winds. Insect development also much is uh, much slower in the tundra such as the butterflies often takes two years to mature. Many uh, bird species will migrate for summer nesting and breeding, while the mammals uh, such as moths, caribou, reindeer, lemming, fox, wolves, and polar bear. After the summer end, the migratory organisms migrate to a warmer places, but only few species will stay for the long cool winter to hibernate. So these are the few examples of flora and fauna that can be found in Tundra. So in summary, the Tundra is described as the permafrost, bitterly cold temperature and high winds are responsible for the absence of trees and other tall plants. Okay, next the terrestrial biome is taiga. Taiga is also known as the coniferous forest or the boreal forest. The location of taiga is extending across the northern part of the North America, Europe and Asia. Taiga is also found at cool high elevations in more temperate latitudes. The Eurasia includes the Sweden, Finland, Russia, Japan and also Mongolia. North America which includes the Canada and Alaska. Taiga biomes is actually situated closely to the tundra biomes. The precipitation is relatively low, uh, about 300 to 900 mm rainfall per year, and they are mostly in the form of snow. Uh, the precipitate falls as a rain during the summer, but also fall as a snow during the winter. Taiga may have contains numerous ponds and lakes. The temperature of the taiga biome is freezing cold throughout most of the year, typically negative 40 degrees Celsius to negative 1 degrees Celsius during winter, while negative 7 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius during the summer. The weather and the climate of the taiga has the subarctic climate which are very large temperature range between the seasons. The winters are long and extremely cold and also severe but not harsh as in tundra. 
the summers is very short which is barely about three months and they are warm and wet and this may encourage the growth of some plants but it only a short growing season during the winter there is a lot of snow falling and the land is frozen with ice while the during summer it can be seen that the land are dotted with the lakes bogs and also marshes now the flora and fauna in taiga in the cold harsh climate the taiga will have a less diversity in plant and animal life. Plants and animals must have them adaptive features in order to survive in this cold climate. Dominance of few species is distinct but the, diff the diversity very low when compared to temperate and also tropical biomes. Let's take a look on the plant and vegetation. The taiga soil is usually thin, nutrient poor and acidic. Taiga is characterized by the coniferous forest because the land are mostly dominated by pines, oak, spruces, firs and larches. The forest under story dominate by the twin flower, lingonberry, banberry and also dwarf cornel. Other plants such as low lying mosses and lichens they do not shed their leaves during the winter and this evergreen has a green leaf throughout the year thus the plants are named as evergreen this means they have an ample food during the winter due to the presence of chlorophyll in their leaves on the other hand the animal population consists mainly of seed eaters herbivorous insects and also large browsers the predators such as grizzly bear wolves lynxes and wolverines while the mammals have the thick winter coats that insulate them against the cold and some are hibernate throughout the long winter such as the deer, moose, elk, wolves and caribou. This snow will prevent the soil from becoming permanently frozen which allows certain species to remain active all the winter in underground tunnels. The bird usually migrate to south uh, which is uh, slightly warmer because the winter are too cold for them to stay. Some animals that do not migrate or hibernate will grow dense feather or fur in order to keep uh, them warm or other than that they also can turn into white to match the snow. Okay, This is uh, one of the adaptation for the camouflage for hunting food without being noticed. So these are several examples of flora and fauna in taiga. So taiga can be described as dense uniform stand of coniferous tree. These conical shapes of the conifers will prevent much snow from accumulating on and breaking their branches. Next is the temperate rainforest which also known as temperate broadleaf forest. It also called as the two season forest. The location of the temperate rainforest near the cooler coastal areas further north or south of the equator which is actually at the Pacific coast of North America, southeast coast of South America and a small part of UK, Norway, New Zealand, South Australia and also Japan. Most of the world's temperate rainforests are protected in a park. The precipitation can be in the form of rainfall or fog. The fog may contribute about 180 to 300 mm precipitation while the high rainfall may around 200 to 350 mm per year. The temperature is hardly falls below the freezing point and hardly exceed to 27 degrees Celsius. The average summer temperature are around 10 degrees Celsius. So we can see that these biomes are so mild due to their closeness to the ocean at one side and the mountain ranges on the other side. The temperature, uh, sorry. The weather or the climate of the temperate rainforest, they have a major seasonal changes where the temperate rainforest have two different seasons, either winter or summer. The winter is quite long and wet while the summer is very short, dry and foggy. 
during summer the weather is considerably cool because they have a fog that provide a sufficient moisture which enable the rainforest to thrive it has a well defined growing season which about 140 to 300 days per year Next is the flora and fauna that can be found in the temperate rainforest, the plants and also the vegetation. As opposed uh, to tropical rainforest, temperate rainforest consists of only two main layers of vegetation, the emergent layer and also the canopy layer. This canopy layer include the understory layer and also the forest floor which consists of less vegetation. The soil are nutrient poor but high in organic material which come from the shed leaves. Uh, this is um, the process of the this, uh, the process of decomposition is very slow uh, due to their cool temperature. The dominant plants such as beech, maple, oak, western hemlock, deciduous hardwood trees. The forest floor includes the shrub like ferns. Moses and liverworts. Uh, they also can be found a lichen that are uh, grow on the rock, fallen logs, and also the tree trunks. This biome attributed about forty percent of the entire earth cover, but today the figure has dropped uh, to measly six percent because of uh, most of them are heavily logged by the human. Next is the fauna. Uh, which is the animal life compared to tropical rainforest biome temperate rainforest harbor a very few mammals due to the absence of series for the vegetation layers and the vegetation is seasonal so the animal must have to uh, develop adaptation to ever changing season while uh, the animals that are not able to adapt will migrate uh, during the winter the bird is varieties, uh, including the cardinals, woodpeckers, uh, the browsers, and also predators also can be found in the temperate rainforest. As for conclusion, temperate rainforest is the types of rainforest occurring in a temperate climate, which is experiencing a vast amount of rainfall, but feature a cooler average temperature compared to tropical rainforest. Next, uh, our uh, terrestrial biome is the temperate deciduous forest. Most of the plants of deciduous forest uh, will lose their leaves seasonally. The location of uh, temperate deciduous forests are located in the mid latitude areas, most of the eastern United States. Middle Europe and also part of Eastern Asia, such as Chile, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, China, and Japan. The precipitation are uh, relatively high and fairly distributed throughout the year. The high rainfall are average between 750 to 1500 mm per year. And this precipitation include the summer rain and also the winter snow. The temperature are uh, range from a very. The temperatures are range from a very cold in the winter to hot or warm in the summer. Are typically in this biome, the temperature range between negative uh, thirty degrees Celsius up to thirty degrees Celsius. Uh, throughout the year. The weather and the climate. This biome is always changing, typically humid for much uh, of the year. There is an approximately six month growing season where these uh, biomes are exposed to warm and cold air masses which cause this area to have four distinct seasons which is the spring, summer, fall and winter. Let's take a look on the seasonal changes in the temperate deciduous forest. During spring season, the seed will take root and vegetation begins to grow back. The weather is warmer and often wetter and it is known as the growing season. 
Next, the summer. The temperature may increase up to the hottest of the year. Then, after that, continue with autumn or fall. The deciduous trees will change color of their leaf to a brilliant red, oranges and golds, and after that, they will fall off. The animals will prepare for the upcoming cold weather by storing food or traveling or in other words migrate to a warmer regions. During the winter when uh, there is a low temperature it would reduce the rate of photosynthesis so the broad flat leaf of deciduous tree will lose water quickly so the ground is frozen make it is difficult to absorb the water so uh, in order to face this problem they will drop their leaves. Deciduous tree will stay dormant in the winter and will bloom again during the spring. So, you can as you can see here, this slide shows a very old sugar maple tree throughout the seasons in Vermont, United States. So, this is a maple tree during spring, during summer, during autumn, and during winter. Flora and fauna in temperate deciduous forests. The plants and vegetation. Plant diversity is very extensive, resulting from the high availability of the temperature, moisture, light, elevation, and also the nutrients. The soil is very fertile. The vegetation composed of trees that are shed all their leaves during the autumns and start to grow a new complement during the spring. Okay, the dominant trees such as oak, birch, hickory, beech, and maple species, while the understory will be dominated by the shrubs and low-growing hops. Moses, lichens, ferns, and wildflowers also can be found on the shady forest floor where only small amount of sunlight will passing through. The tree change uh, color during autumn and then lose their leaf become dormant during the winter. And then after that, they will produce new leaf during the spring. The rate of the decomposition are very low, and the forest accumulate a thick layer of leaf litter, which conserve many of the biome's nutrients. And this is the fauna that can be found in deciduous forests. They have a rich diversity of animals because of their variety and abundance of food and habitats. Animals must be able to adapt to the changing season. Some animals in this biome will migrate or hibernate during the winter. The characteristic members of the fauna is either mass eater or the omnivores. The, the mammals show adaptation to an arboreal life, which is a uh, animals that living in the tree. Other than that, fauna such as herbivores, omnivores and predators also can be found, okay, which includes the deer, okay, the raccoons, the bear, uh, the bobcats and also the cardinal. So basically the temperate deciduous forest where uh, the tree will drop their leaf before winter and as when the temperature are too low uh, for effective photosynthesis, the water will lost through the transpiration. It is not easy to replace from the frozen soil. Next is the temperate grassland. Temperate grassland is an open, continuous, fairly flat areas of grass. Before we focus on the temperate grassland, you should know that the grassland biome itself Grassland biome is the area in which the vegetation is dominated by nearly continuous cover of grasses. These large, uh, these large open areas of grasses with a very few trees are maintained by the grazing animals and frequent fires. The type of the grasslands include uh, two types which is the temperate grasslands and also the tropical grassland, the savanna. So what's the difference between temperate grassland and savanna? Okay, temperate grassland have a great range of temperature while savanna uh, remain high temperature throughout the year. In temperate grassland, they have adequate and regular precipitation but uh, in savanna, they may have a rainy and dry period. 
okay uh, the nutrient uh, or the soil in the temperate grassland is nutrient rich compared to savanna they are poor and dry soils okay and the primary variety of uh, grasses and herbs can be found in the temperate grassland while in savanna they have grasses and woody plants okay in temperate grassland there is no trees and shrub but in savanna they have trees and shrub but it is uh, scattered uh, throughout uh, over the land area so now we will focus on the temperate grassland because the savanna will be explained in the next part of this uh, video so the temperate grassland is located mostly above the equator on the northern continents okay, which is uh, the area of America, Africa, Asia and Australia which cover up 40% uh, of the earth's surface the largest temperate grassland was the US prairie land uh, for your information, there are various names of temperate grasslands which includes the Central North America called as prairies and plains. In Russia and Asia, they call temperate grassland as steppes. The South Africa called as belt. Argentina and Uruguay called as pampas. Uh, while the Australia and New Zealand call temperate grassland as downs. The precipitations of the temperate grassland reduce rainfall about 500 to 900 mm per year. Okay, they have a prolonged uh, dry seasons and periodic drought is common. Okay, uh, they are extremely grassy because uh, there are not enough rain for the trees to grow. Okay, the temperature. During winter, they are generally cold. Uh, the temperature may drop as low as negative 40 degrees Celsius, while the summer often about 38 degrees Celsius. The temperature will be vary with seasons of tornadoes, blizzards, and fires across in many temperate grassland regions. Uh, when I take a look on the weather and the climate, uh, the, cli the weather of the temperate grassland is very cold and dry winters, uh, but they ha also have warm and wet summers with some rain. Okay, the tornadoes are spawned as warm air meets the cold air. The snowstorms will spread across the plains. Okay, uh, in the colder region, they will experience an icy winters and also blizzards. Uh, somehow, wildfire also can be um, common in this uh, temperate grassland, which they are usually sparked by the lightning, but are also the result from the human activity. Next is the flora and fauna that can be found in the temperate grassland. First one, the plant and vegetation. Uh, during the seasonal drought, the occasionally fires and grazing by large browsers will prevent the woody shrubs and trees from invading and becoming established. That's why we can see only the grasses are dominant. So, the dominant plants are grasses and forbs, which is vary in their height. Okay, the most uh, tall grass prairies can be up to 2 meter height. Okay, um, they have extensive roots uh, for recovering quickly. Various species of grass such as galeta, purple needle grass, bulgatama and other uh, types of grasses. Uh, wildflowers such as cacti, aster, clover, blazing stars, cornflowers, uh, golden rods uh, and also uh, indigos. Mm, this temperate grassland have deep fertile soil make it the temperate grassland ideal for agriculture especially for the growing grains uh, but somehow uh, nowadays the human impact of the temperate grassland they have turned into a farmland the temperate grassland are home to many large uh, and small herbivores the larger and browsers such as bison uh, antelope, zebras, and wild horses. 
The predators such as hyena, African dog, cheetah, lion also can be found in this area. Uh, other than that, uh, inhabited by a wide variety of burrowing mammals such as the prairie dogs. So this is uh, the fauna or the animals that can be found in the temperate grassland. So generally, temperate grassland, um, the grassland soil is rich in nutrients and deep. This habitat will provide a fertile land for the agriculture. Alright, um, we have finished uh, the five terrestrial biomes and the next four terrestrial biomes will be further explained in the next video. So you may refer to biology book from Campbell and Raven for further reading. So that's all from me. Thank you so much for listening. Bye bye.